All right, so in this video, we are looking at the terms of trade, which is really just another measurement of Australia's place within the world economy. Um, the terms of trade doesn't, the language doesn't really uncover that much about what economists are actually talking about here. Unless you think of terms as kind of being like, you know, an arrangement, but really it's about the price of trade. So if you can think of it that way, then, then use it. Otherwise, the terms of trade is kind of confusing. In this video, we're going to use, we're going to look at the meaning and the measurement of the terms of trade. And I'm going to give you a better definition. Don't worry. So what actually is the terms of trade? I already said it's about price. And that's really the first thing you should think about when you see the terms of trade. Always, we're focusing on the price. But the price of what, Mr. Villain? Well, we're measuring the average price paid, sorry, average price received for Australians' exports, Australia's exports, relative to the average price paid for imports from overseas. So if you take terms as prices, it's really the terms or the prices of our exports and the prices of our imports. Terms of trade is really important to look at over time. And we like to compare one year to the next to kind of work out, well, what is happening to the terms of trade or what's happening to the prices paid, the prices received for exports versus the prices paid for imports. Now we can get even more sort of precise with this because there's a formula for the terms of trade. The terms of trade is actually an index and remember what an index measures. Um, it's an index that measures the export price index over the import price index. So it's an index that's derived from two other indexes. But just remember what an index does. It tracks changes usually in prices from a base year over time. We have the CPI index, we have the chain volume index. The only difference here is that we're measuring export prices and import prices rather than consumable goods. You know, consumable goods and services or household goods and services that the CPI does. So we just have a basket of exports that we sell and we have a basket of imports that we sell and we track the changes in those prices, just the prices, not the quantity. Then we times it by 100 and we get our index number. So you should already be thinking, and we'll get to this in a later video, but what determines or what causes a movement in the terms of trade is either a change in the export price index or the import price index. Now, but in theory, terms of trade indicates the quantity or the amount of imports that can be purchased for a given quantity of exports. Um, idea being that if terms of trade improves, then we can actually buy more from overseas with the exports that we sell. We can buy more imports with the exports that we've sold. So we do want the terms of trade to be improving. Remember that when we're looking at GDP or our aggregate demand formula, and when you see X as a dollar figure, really what's under that is the price times quantity. So we're saying, what did we sell the export exports for? What was the price of the exports? And then how many of them did we actually sell? In the terms of trade, we're just trying to look at the price of exports. So we have to isolate price. And, and really, when you hear terms of trade, I can't stress it enough, you need to be thinking about prices and prices only. Same goes for imports. Okay, so we're looking at the price. What was the price of imports? And if we use the AD formula again, the M component of AD is actually prices times quantity. That gives us the overall expenditure. We're not concerned with that. We're just concerned with what was the price or the average price. And remember, those are measured by these indexes. Okay, so we can calculate it this way. We're going to have year one, year two, year three. In the from year one to year two, the export price index has increased, which means we've received more for our exports. Doesn't matter about the quantity, and the same goes for imports actually. So the fact that import prices uh, rose more than export prices actually means that it was an unfavorable movement or deterioration in the terms of trade. In year three, export prices increased by more, or in, export in, prices increased and import prices decreased which means it's been a favorable movement. Remember that means we're receiving more for our exports relative to our imports. And that means that we can actually purchase more imports given a basket of exports. Finally, for this video, this is the history of the terms of trade in Australia. And this is really important 
a uh, lot of sort of economics history lesson because between sort of 2000 and whatever this is, 2, 2003, we have this amazing mining, mining boom in Australia up until about 2012 here. And you can see that that's been reflected in the terms of trade as, the, as mining was booming and there was a huge demand from um, parts of the world for our commodities, the price of those commodities went up. Remember your microeconomics, when there's an increase in demand, it tends to lead to an increase in price. That's what happens for, with commodities here. And it's reflected in the terms of trade. So we received more and more for the items that we sold overseas, which is good for the terms of trade. Or in other words, the export price index increased more than the import price index. All right, so it's a bit to get your head around. Um, we're going to do some practice on this in class, but for now we should just have an understanding of the meaning and the measurement of the terms of trade. And we'll do the factors that influence terms of trade in another video. Bye for now.